Hey guys, what's up? It's Patrick here, and today I'm bringing you guys the next episode of my Let's Play series on Chief Pat 2. So last time we left off, I was still using that Hog Rider sort of trophy hunting base design, but I switched back to my Pat's Playground design to help protect my resources, and you can see everything's pretty much set up the same, except I've built up my giant bombs, and I really didn't make use of those in my original base design, and seeing as they're pretty expensive to reload, I'm just going to throw those guys on the top and uh, try not to use those. If someone drops like one Barbarian though, it'll probably set them all off, but we'll just have to see when that happens. All right, as far as upgrades go today, I'm going to focus on getting my cannon to the next level. That's only going to be another 820,000 gold. And then as far as elixir goes, I still have this one dark elixir drill to upgrade to level four. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. That's three million elixir, and those are pretty cheap. But if I do end up getting a little bit more gold, I can probably upgrade something like my Tesla. So I'm just going to go ahead and see how much I can get and then worry about the upgrades at the end of the video. All right, so let's go ahead and keep farming. Like I said in the last video, I've been starting to farm in Crystal on my second account, and it's been working out really well. At least it did in the first video, and since I've been doing that, I've actually had a lot of success, and I don't have to spend 10 minutes trying to find raids. So for any of you guys who are Town Hall 9, who were around gold like I was, uh, personally I was struggling a little bit, and now that I'm in Crystal, I've been finding bases to raid a lot quicker. So you can see this guy right here. First of all, when I found him, I saw that his elixir pumps were full. So even though he had a league Emblem. Uh, I could tell that one, he had a lot of shrubbery on the outside, so he hadn't logged on to clear that. And then again, number two, his elixir pumps were full. So I figured that most of it was going to be in the mines and pumps. So I started spamming my goblins using the same strategy I've always used. I did actually add two wall breakers to it because I found out I was running out um, and I only had to subtract like four goblins for my composition. And yeah, things worked out pretty well for this raid. There is 100,000 elixir left. And whenever you guys are deciding whether you want to continue attacking a base, when I'm looking at this base, there's still four storages left. So that means there's 25,000 elixir in each one of those storages. And I'd probably have to drop most of the rest of my army to get that. So I'm just going to skip out on that. And I'm actually going to skip out on the town hall too, because I'm really not focused on trophies. And I'm going to go ahead and surrender and take my resources. So in the end, we got 416,000, pretty solid raid. Again, we lost 26 trophies because I'm not really worried about those. And let's go ahead and move on to the next one and do the same exact thing. So this is another type of base you're going to find up in Crystal 3. You're going to find these bases that have been abandoned. They have around 600,000 resources available. Probably not a lot of it's going to be inside of the storages if they haven't logged on in a while. And I've really just been capitalizing on these bases. And I found them, I mean, you can find these definitely in gold. And mainly for like the last, I'd say, year, I was farming in gold 3. And I would find bases like this all the time. But it seems recently with the new updates um, that I'm finding them in Crystal a lot more often so instead of finding like town hall sevens town hall eights i'm finding town hall tens like this and it seems that i'm finding a little bit more resources but i'm definitely finding them more quickly and for this guy again i just took care of the mines and pumps and once again i'm not really worried about anything else so one little trick i pulled at the end i made sure i got this dark elixir from this dark elixir drill right here so that was a quick i think maybe 90 and there is one more drill right here on the bottom left, but since the army camps are there, my troops are probably going to focus on those. So I'm just going to go ahead and surrender and take my resources and run away. So in the end, 573,000 resources, 270 dark elixir. These are the type of raids that you definitely want to have. I'm really not spending that much on troops. I'm only dropping maybe 50 to 70 goblins, a couple archers, a couple giants. And uh, yeah, I'm getting massive profits from this and it doesn't take too long to find a base either. So again, while you guys are raiding, make sure you guys have troops being trained in the meantime, because if you're using a strategy like this, uh, let's say I'm training goblins and by the time my raid finishes and I go back to my base, it's only going to take me about four or five minutes to recook this army and attack once again. So that's how you get millions of resources per hour. You use efficient army compositions, you attack bases like this who have a lot of stuff on the outside. And then from there, you're going to get a ton of resources and your armies train up super quickly. All right, same, same thing for this base right here. Turns out he actually had his Dark Elixir on the outside, so I was able to steal all of that pretty quickly. I did end up dropping some giants. I really try not to drop, drop giants if I don't have to because they do cost, I think, like 3,000 Elixir each. Uh, but I ended up dropping a couple of those just to make it a little bit easier. 660 Dark Elixir, 300,000 resources, and let's move on to this next raid. So for this guy, 530,000 available. It looks like there's a couple of elixir pumps actually inside of the base, so I'm probably going to have to focus on those. But first of all, once again, we're going to focus on the things on the outside. 
So like I said in the very beginning of my video, like I did in the like I said in the guide, I think I usually bring about eight wall breakers. And when I first started playing Clash and I started using the strategy, I brought six wall breakers. Then I figured out that wasn't enough, so I went to eight wall breakers. And really now that I'm Town Hall nine and I have 220 army camp spaces available, I've switched to 10 wall breakers because sometimes you find bases like this where you just need a couple wall breakers to break into different sections. And uh, it's been working out really well. So even though you're sacrificing, I guess, four goblins, and maybe you're spending a little bit more elixir on those wall breakers, it definitely helps when you find bases like this where you have to break through a couple of layers, and it makes it a lot easier to the point where you're not focus where you're not relying on your goblins to break through walls for you. Because I've had a lot of times where I've run out of wall breakers, and I've had to focus on my goblins breaking through walls. And uh, if there's a wizard tower or a mortar there, it's definitely a pain. So seeing as there's two elixir pumps right here, I'm just going to go ahead and drop my clan castle because I had a bunch of minions inside of it. Those guys will be able to help reach the elixir pumps. I'm also going to drop my archer queen and I'm going to hold on to my barbarian king for now. I really don't need him. And I'm just waiting for these guys to take care of that arch or that uh, elixir pump and then I'll be able to surrender after that. Again, there's not really too much inside of these storages. I think there might be one elixir storage on the bottom that I can actually take care of at the very end of this. But you can see my goblins finally broke through that wall and they're going to take care of that pump. So looking at that gold mine on the left, it's under construction, so I'm not going to worry about that. And like I said, there was a storage down here, so since it is so open, I'm just going to drop some goblins, and that'll wrap it up for that. All right, so we're at 41%, and since I did surrender a couple of raids earlier, I decided I would just stick it out and drop a couple of troops to take care of these buildings. So I'm focusing on the Builder's Hut, focusing on this uh, spell factory right there, really the buildings that don't have a lot of hit points. Dark Barracks, there's a Barbarian King Pad right there. Um, so all of those things really don't have a lot of health and they're pretty easy to take care of. All right, 50%, that's going to get us 11 trophies, as well as we did snag over 490,000 resources and a little bit of Dark Elixir. So pretty much I'm just keeping up with these good, efficient rays, and that's what's been able to get me the maximum amount of resources, and that's worked out really well. All right, so heading back to base. We did drop a little bit of trophies. We dropped to 2,068, but that's not a problem. I can always put my town hall inside if I want to. As far as what I want to upgrade, like I said, I'm going to do my Dark Elixir Jewel to level 4. That's really going to help with my Archer Queen upgrade as well as my Dark Elixir upgrades. And then as far as gold goes, I actually saved just enough to upgrade one of my Teslas. So I was deciding between the cannon and the Tesla, but it's always more epic to max out one of your defenses. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. It's going to take 14 days, so definitely a long period of time. Uh, but I've been a little bit inactive with this account, so it shouldn't really hold me up too much. All right, so we're going to end that on over just a little bit over 900 gold. And I think that'll do it for this video. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys think about Crystal League Farming, if it's been working out for you. Other than that, I will see you guys later, and thanks for watching. Peace out.